Time now is 7.37. There is so much advice on the most effective way to diet, it often is hard to know what to believe. A huge study in the US has found that those who adopted Mediterranean diets with fewer carbohydrates were more successful in losing weight and keeping it off than those who just cut out the fat. It's been published today in The Lancet. Let's discuss this with GP Dr. Rongan Chatterjee and Professor Susan Jebb, who's a dietary expert from Oxford University, who's in Shrewsbury. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Dr. Chatterjee, how many times do you have patients come into your office? into your surgery and say, I want to lose weight, but I'm being t told so many different things, I have no clue about how to do it. I think, Naga, that happens every single day in my practice. People are trying to lose weight and they are struggling. And that goes contrary to a lot of the advice we've had for the last 20, 30 years or so. And I think one of the reasons that is, is when people have been cutting fat out of their diet, they've been increasing something which is actually very bad, so the refined carbohydrates and the sugars. And so for the majority of people I see in my practice, and also when I look around in public, most of us are eating too many refined carbohydrates and sugars. So for these people, when you actually reduce those kind of carbohydrates, I'm not talking about vegetables. Vegetables are carbohydrates. They're very good carbohydrates. When you reduce the sort of the nasty kind of carbohydrates, actually I find people lose weight very, very quickly and feel better very quickly as well. So, Professor Susan Jebb, give us the, the uh, benefit of your expertise in this area. What, what do you think is the, the clearest message from this survey of surveys? Well, firstly, it is a great piece of research. It's pulled together data from over 60,000 people around the world taking part in lots of trials. But the key message, in fact, is that any of these kinds of diets work for people who are overweight and trying to lose weight. The fact is, in that group, even the low-fat diets, people lost on average five kilograms over about a year. Now, it's true that on the low-carbohydrate diets, weight loss was perhaps a little bit greater, an extra kilo, but we're talking about an extra couple of pounds on top of a 12-pound weight loss with low-fat diets. So I think people need to take away from this that dieting does work, and it doesn't matter terribly which kind of diet you go on. The important thing is to get some support and then to be able to stick with it. So choosing the right diet for you that you can stick with. Uh, your title is Professor of Diet and Population Health. I mean, the population health is an interesting one, isn't it? Because we have a major issue with people basically being too big. That's absolutely right. And one of the things that my research group are interested in is how can we develop interventions which help many, many, many people, not just not just the isolated few. And that means that sometimes we have to settle for slightly less weight loss than perhaps individuals might desire, but nonetheless a weight loss which we know brings real health benefits. And so to put this study in context, this weight loss of about five kilograms, we know for people who are at high risk of developing diabetes, that's enough to more than halve the risk of developing diabetes. That's a health benefit which is so well worth having. I think the message from this paper should be, contrary to the rather popular myth, dieting does actually work. And we need to get that message through both to the public and indeed to many, many other doctors so that they start to provide patients with the support they need to be able to lose weight effectively. So, so whether that's on a low-fat diet, a low-carbohydrate diet or a Mediterranean-type diet. When I hear diet, Dr Chatterjee, I think it's for a certain amount of time. So, OK, say 12 months and, and the studies show by cutting out refined carbohydrates, you, you lose more weight than you would if you just cut out fat. But then what happens after that? Because this is the problem. It's all very well going on a diet and seeing yeah. the results, but it's a lifestyle that you've got to change, not just one moment Absolutely, Nagar. And I think when we focus on these you know, fats versus carbs, I think we're missing the big picture. Our guidelines should be based on foods, that what are helpful foods for us and what are not helpful foods for us. I talk to my patients about changing the way they're eating long term rather than for a short period of time. You can go on any diet, you can go on a juice diet and you'll lose weight in the next two or three weeks. And you're but obviously not advocating I'm that. not advocating that. But what I'm saying, what, what was good about this meta-analysis is that it looked for people for 12 months minimum. And that's quite different from some of the studies we've seen before because that is trying to give us a kind of long-term indication in terms of will this be sustainable. One thing I will say though about these 
lower refined carbohydrate diets that increase your good quality, uh, sorry, your good quality fat content, I find people find these sort of diets quite easy to stick to relative to the low fat diets. That's been my clinical experience with my patients. And there are certain groups of patients who I almost always put on a low refined carbohydrate diet, type 2 diabetics. You know, people with pre-diabetes, one in three of the UK adult population have got pre-diabetes. Three and a half million people have type 2 diabetes. This sort of condition, diabetes, is in many ways a carbohydrate intolerance. So yeah. these people will benefit from a low refined carbohydrate diet. And the way they can make that work is by increasing their content of good quality, healthy, mm. natural fat. Uh, Dr. Chatterjee, thank you. And Professor, thank you for your time this morning. It'll be a subject I'm sure we return to another time. But uh, for mm. today, thank you very much.